So my name is Emma Dodd and today's webinar is all about supporting students for success with reading lists and I'm actually really pleased uh, to be joined with colleagues from uh, the University of Reading and the University of Nottingham to just talk about um, what their approaches have been in supporting students for success with reading lists. And there's been a lot of focus um, and support materials uh, for a number of years about academic engagement and how they can use the system and, and the reasons for it and seeing a growing trend in, in more and more institutions and looking at that from the student viewpoint as well because of the different things that students can do with reading this and that's what we'll be exploring. So today's session, it will just be a little overview from myself, uh, from the TALIS side, on how to get the most from the reading list. And then I'll be handing over to Kim Coles from the University of Reading to talk about their approach and what materials they have produced. Then moving on to hear from Nicola and Catherine from the University of Nottingham. I've also got a uh, example from the University of Glasgow who have kindly shared allowed me permission to share their resources as well. And then as always for our community webinars, there'll be plenty of time for any questions or discussion or perhaps um, any comments that you wanted to make to share as well. Okay, so for TALIS Aspire, there's uh, lots of different ways that students can get the most out of the reading list and you'll hear uh, from from our universities presenting and, and those that you've known yourself as well. It could be from accessing their list, whether it's from the uh, discovery layer, uh, hand, course handbooks uh, or uh, BLEs. They can add notes and they can click through to their full online resources and view full text from lists as well. They can also manage their reading list using reading intentions so they can manage their own notes and read in that way. And they can also export individual items for their reference list or perhaps um, when they want to export to a PDF, a QR code or to view in different citation styles. So there is lots of different ways and features within TALIS Aspire which are ever growing. An example could be uh, from last summer where we had the report broken loop feature added in for students as well. So that's just a little bit from me, just to add in what we've seen from TALIS side and what's in the system to support students. But actually, what I would really like you to hear from, uh, from your colleagues in the community. Um, so starting with uh, Kim Coles, I'm really pleased to introduce Kim today, who is Academic Liaison uh, Team Manager at the University of Reading. So I am just going to switch over presenting to Kim. So you should get a request to view shortly. And I can see the screen. If you just unmute yourself, there you go. Is that all right? Are you able to see that okay? Yeah, able to see your slides and mm -hmm. hear you, Kim. So I'll just mute myself now and just hand over to yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak um, today. Um, Emma's just said, my name is Kim. Um, I'm an academic liaison team manager at the University of Reading. Um, so my role involves supporting academic staff and students, particularly in the School of Literature and Languages, and along with my other um, academic liaison colleagues, encouraging engagement with the online reading list system. So just to begin with a bit of information about TALIS at the University of Reading. Um, we launched TALIS with a set of pilot departments in 2015 and have been working with academic staff to create and manage lists since then. Um, I've included a few figures here on um, this slide just to show you how many lists we have in the system. Um, we've recently worked on creating and updating a purchasing formula to help us to manage the reviews which are done by our collections team and we've been working particularly hard this year on updating our hierarchy. So as you can see we've got quite a lot of lists in total since launch, but now most of these are archived and we have around 1300 that are active and published for this academic year. Um, 
Academic liaison librarians at Reading provide training and support for academic staff who on the whole create and edit lists for their modules, but we are always on hand to take a look at lists um, and help with the creation, editing and also linking up to our VLE Blackboard. So we have a fairly long history of using the system um, and some experience of encouraging our staff and students to use it. Um, I wanted to begin by sharing some examples of student facing materials that we use to encourage and support students to make the most of their online reading lists and the different features that there are. So our main thing that we have, which um, brings everything together, is um, a student facing LibGuide. It's a short LibGuide that's aimed directly at our um, students which details the various functions and features of an online reading list. So I've taken a little screenshot of the home page here which um, just tells them what the, the LibGuide is going to talk about but on the left hand side you should be able to see there are some tabs so we will explain how to access the list, um, how they use it, so how the structure of the list will help them to identify where things are in the library um, and then going into detail about some of the other features such as setting a reading intention um, and adding student notes and creating an account. We also added a couple of key questions around um, online material as this is always a question that we've had um, because the reading list is online um, but not all of the materials are available online. We've put in some extra information there about um, using the list and understanding what kind of material is online and what isn't. Um, so basically this aims to kind of give a bit of context and a bit of information about what the online reading list is doing and how students can use it. Um, we encourage students to access their lists through Blackboard. So most of the um, directional information on this guide is pointing students to the VLE so that they can go to the right module and click on the reading list to view the most accurate and up-to-date list that their module convener has put together for them. But once they're in there, they're still able to see pretty much the same information as if they'd gone to the main homepage. So we've also included lots of information about that. Um, I popped a link at the bottom there as well in case anybody's interested in, in browsing it. As part of the guide, we also have um, a video screencast which covers all of this information. It's embedded in the home page and it's just a kind of narrated walkthrough of a reading list showing students how they might use it. The structure of it, understanding the filters um, and how they can change the citation style, add their own notes um, and, and show them what it looks like. Um, it's embedded into this LibGuide but we um, now host it on Microsoft Stream and on YouTube so it can also be embedded in a couple of modules and other places if necessary. It's likely that most of the views come from the guide um, I think we did have a had a look at the guide before putting this presentation together. Last academic year, our LibGuide received about 6,000 views. So it's likely that, that a lot of the, the views of this particular video come from that guide. Both the LibGuide and the video are also linked on some lists. Um, themselves. So this is a screenshot of a list from one of my departments, although I can't take credit for this as my predecessor um, embedded these links and talked to the department about doing this. But um, this department have made really good use of the guide and video by adding a short section at the top of each um, reading list that just gives a little bit of information about what the list is doing. So the first link is a link to that video and the second link is a link out to the LibGuide itself so that students can go a little bit further. Of course, each department manages their lists quite differently, um, but in certain departments or for certain lecturers where um, notes are used um, and a bit of contextual information is given, this can be a useful way to give students some information and point them towards the LibGuide that will just help them to sort of navigate the list a little bit better and understand how it's been put together and what they can do. So I think this is quite a good additional feature that can help um, when it's in the right place so students are already on the list and they're not going anywhere else but there's just a handy help link at the top of the list there for them. We also mention and sometimes demonstrate um, online reading lists at induction and welcome talks for example um, and this now as of last year also includes 
um, our screencast material um, and any asynchronous teaching as well as live teaching that we've been able to do. In addition to that, we use our lists sometimes in um, slightly more creative ways. So we might create a list for a module um, or a particular task or activity. Um, this is usually done by a staff member rather than students, um, but they're sometimes used to help supplement a particular exercise or an activity. Um, in one case, um, so I've referenced a Spanish part one module here, um, the module convener has set a really nice exercise as part of a co-taught session um, where um, the module convener and I will talk to the students about understanding different material types and then use the online reading list as a starting point for research on their topic. So the students work in groups on a particular topic using the online reading list to have a look through um, a set of different recommended items and then we'll go a little bit further and go beyond the list and start to look at how they might use the library catalogue to find similar items or items on a, a topic that interests them. I think this is a really great exercise. Um, it's not pr only practically useful, but it encourages the students to use the list in a safe way where there are a couple of um, members of staff around to talk to them about how the list has been put together and how they might use it so that they've got a kind of basis to start from. Um, and understanding that the online reading list might be something completely new and they're expected to use it in a, in a different way. So learning how to um, understand it and perhaps manage their reading through it um, is a useful skill for their future studies. Um, we also have um, a list that's been set up for an English part one exercise which encourages students to look at a particular essay and all of the different things that it references um, and go out into the library and beyond that list to find um, items that are in, of interest to them and that are mentioned. So we use lists in slightly different ways as well. Um, I've also put in here some sort of communication and things that we try to make sure we do each year. Um, each year when we're given the chance to update library information in our programme handbooks um, and information for new and returning students, we try to make sure that reading lists are mentioned um, and links to the guide are included so that students can get an idea of what to expect on arrival. Um, and as I mentioned before, academic liaison librarians may also include this information in welcome talks wherever possible. So just trying to get the message out there that um, this is something that they are expected to access and they can also talk to their librarian about using the information on the list and, and finding it in the library. Um, we also include academic staff in part of our in part of our encouragement um, to try to get students to use their reading list. So I just wanted to highlight two things quickly here as well. Um, we know that students listen to their lecturers, so we also try to include this when we're talking to our academic staff as well. We do have an academic staff libguide, as I'm sure many of you do. Um, I've just screenshotted the section here that talks about linking the list to Blackboard and publishing it. Um, there's lots of information in this libguide. But one of the things that we've included here is some guidance on making sure that the list is visible to students um, so that there's no danger that um, work has gone into creating that list and then it can't be seen by the students. So we have ad guides um, to help with that. Um, I also run monthly webinars for academic staff to come and um, find out how to use the reading list or get a refresher. Um, and we cover this in that um, session as well, along with some kind of best practice guidelines on how to structure your list. Um, so adding notes, using sections, and we do talk a little bit as well about explaining to students how your list has been structured. Um, because each of our lecturers will use the reading list a little bit differently, um, we recommend that it's worth sitting down and explaining how they've put their list together to encourage their students to make the most of it. Um, and access it and kind of do the reading um, in advance of all of their seminars. And finally, this is a quote that I always like to use in those monthly webinars, as I think this is a really nice summary of the benefit of using that reading list. Um, and hopefully it helps to allay some concerns that I know some lecturers may have around providing everything um, in a reading list. Um, so we use this sometimes as a, as a jumping off point to talk about scaffolding and types of resources to link. Um, but I think it's quite nice to close the loop in that way and just show that actually the work that they're putting into 
putting these lists together and working with the library on that doesn't mean that students are reading the items and that they are finding it useful, they are making the most of it. Okay, that's everything I wanted to share. Um, I'm sure there will be time for questions. I hope that was useful. Um, and thank you again very much for having me today. Thank you, Kim. That was great. Um, I'm really interested in, and thank you for taking the time to share those resources and prepare the presentation. We'll take some questions at the end because it might be that there's some thoughts, but if you want to pop anything in the box um, while you think about it, please do so and we'll make sure we get to them all. Okay, so we'll just switch over presenting to Nicola from the University of Nottingham. So you should see the box shortly. Nicola to ask you to share your screen. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so uh, hopefully that's uh, making sense now. So uh, yeah, so I'm Nicola Darlington, uh, one of the collections librarians at the University of Nottingham. And I'm joined this afternoon by Catherine Shipley, who works in the teaching and learning team. Uh, so I'm going to talk first and, and Catherine will talk in a little while. Um, so just a little bit of background um, first. Um, yeah, the inevitable student number slide. Um, yes, yeah, so we um, looking at, uh, we've got three campuses, um, the UK, China and Malaysia. I was talking to the people that deal with uh, reading lists in China and Malaysia uh, yesterday as well, so I can update you a little bit about what they do there. Um, but um, yeah, we have uh, over 35,000 students uh, based at the UK campus, 26,000 of those are undergraduates, over 5,000 are postgraduate taught, so quite a lot of students that we're, we're trying to reach. <laughs> Um, and we do have quite a lot of libraries too, so there's lots of touch points, if you like. Um, there are six um, main libraries, plus we, um, so there's the Hallwood Library, the Arts and Humanities Library, um, the Sutton Bonington Library for Agriculture and Vet Business, George Green Library for Science, um, the one on the lake, which <laughs> is the Genogly Learning Resource Centre and the Medical Library. Plus we've got libraries um, for the Music Department and Manuscripts and Social Collections and service level agreements with um, NHS libraries to support our medical and nursing students. So lots of, uh, potentially a lot of different library staff that need to know about reading lists as well as a lot of students. Um, yeah, um, over the last academic year, we had uh, just over 2,200 lists online um, for that academic year, covering around 68% of, of the modules that we know are out there, so that it doesn't have, still haven't got uh, to, uh, to that magical 100% yet. Um, just a little bit of back again, just background stuff really, um, explaining why we support students in the way that we do, I suppose. The main involvement with reading lists is from the content and discovery uh, section of, of our library service. As I said, I work in the collections team, so we run the reading list support service, so we have staff that help people um, uh, edit or create their lists and um, uh, and work with them on their lists. Um, of the yeah, we do all of the liaison over reading lists, checking for ebook about availability, um, talking, having those conversations about expensive ebooks, that type of thing. We provide the reading list training for academics, and we do quite a lot to promote best practice with reading lists as well. So that that's my team. Um, Within content and discovery as well, we've got the resource acquisitions team, which do all of the reading list reviews, order all the new resources, run the scanning service. So uh, loads and loads of, of work there, as you can tell. Uh, and amongst other jobs, these are just the reading list related jobs for these teams. We do other things as well within those teams. And within the discovery and access team, um, my, I think my colleague Pauline is on the call. Um, she provides a lot of the technical support, doing the hierarchy updates, improving the way we link to resources, GDPR and accessibility stuff, and loads and loads and loads of testing. So all of those teams from content and discovery, even prior to having to work from home because of COVID, were all based at the Kings Meadow campus, which is the old central television studios, quite an interesting building where they used to record blockbusters and all sorts of things like that, now belongs to the university. But uniquely for a campus, it has absolutely no students on it. So on a day-to-day -day basis, even when we are working in the office, we don't see any students at all. Um, so we don't have um, any opportunity to interact with the students. Um, so we have to make sure that the things that we know about reading lists are actually getting out there to the people that, that need to know. 
so our um, idea of a solution around that was to produce a, a series of, of web pages um, and they are very much used by the students but also by the frontline staff. So uh, Catherine, uh, who we're talking to you from the teaching and learning um, team will say more about that, but they are used by our customer services staff, the, the physical staff within the libraries too. So we tried to think about all of the different questions that people may have about reading this from a, from a student perspective. And um, hopefully if I click on that link, that will actually open it up with a bit of luck. Um, so yeah, we've got um, this, um, oh, that's very flashy. I hope you can see that. I don't know why it's quite, flat. oh, oh, okay. I don't know if oh, that, maybe that's not going to work. It's saying it's not sharing properly. I'm not quite sure if you can see what I can see. And no, we're not like what we can do is we can share the link a bit a bit later on. Okay, yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to okay. that for now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so you can see the first section anyway. Each each one of these questions opens up again. The, the link is on the slide, so when you get the slides, you'll see them. Uh, each one of these sections opens up uh, to provide a lot more information. So. Um, how um yes yeah, so it's just as this is just just getting started page how do you actually find your list um why why isn't there a list for your module like I say we've only got 68 percent there's lots of reasons why the, the list might not be there uh, and so on and further down the list which i can't show you at the moment we've got um a, a lot of questions about um how to use the reading intentions how to uh, add notes to your reading list how to export it and so on uh, so to, to make the page look a little bit neater rather than scrolling on and on and on we've decided to use this frequently asked questions approach so each one of those questions opens up to give the the information that that hopefully will be useful um, to the students um, and yeah so that's um, our main way of, of supporting students and supporting our, our frontline staff that work with students on a on a daily basis. Um, I'm going to hand over to Catherine hopefully who's going to uh, talk a little bit about what her team does hopefully she's there. <laughs> Hello yes I'm here. Lovely. <laughs> uh, show my screen. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm new to you should have permission to share screen. There we go. Yep. So I'm just going to test. Um, hello, everybody. I'm just going to test that you can see the different tabs as I go through. So um, could you just let me know that you're seeing the different tabs and it's changing? Yes, it is. I can see that. Perfect. Sorry, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, now. Okay, thank you. So to follow on from what Nicola was saying, I, I've got the, the web link up there as well. And this is one of the things that we show our students. So my role within the teaching and learning team is to um, create and deliver online, well, mostly online at the moment, online teaching sessions where we get students started with the work that they've got to do, introduce them to the libraries, show them more advanced skills, um, how to use EndNote, all of those sorts of things that are relevant to their studies. Um, and the web page that Nicola was talking about that you may not have been able to see is the one that I've got up here. So you can see that there are two aspects to that um, guide. So there is a staff guide and also the student guide. And if we click on that one, you can then actually see the frequently asked question approach that Nicola was talking about in there and if we click on one so how do I search for a particular item it gives you um, a, a little picture and some instructions on how to actually do that and from that page as well you can also search the reading lists as well so we'll go to that bit first from there so you can link from that page but we also link from our, our content discovery tool as well, New Search, and you can find it in there through the three dots. So there are lots of ways that students can access uh, the reading lists. Um, and if we go to here, so we click on the three dots and then reading lists, it takes us to that same page so that we can search. They can also search as well, uh, which I'm sure will be uh, the same for your students within their VLE. Uh, we use Moodle, so they can log on there and there are reading lists that are linked to individual modules. However, if they don't have a module that is um, uh, connected to a reading list, they may want to look at other reading lists as well, which uh, some students do. So they can search by a module code or by a keyword. And I'm going to search for Vikings because not only is it quite interesting, my um, eight-year-old son has just started learning about the Saxons and the Vikings, so there might actually be some stuff in here. I'm not thinking of signing up for a degree yet, but we can have a look and see what's in here. So we then get a list of the possible um, results that we can look at. 
Um, and have we, uh, and we have Vikings in the East Midlands, which is a, a really good module um, that is delivered at Nottingham. And you can see it's laid out in a very similar way um, using um, uh, the uh, TALIS software. Um, and again, we show students that how to view things online. So it's very clear what is available online and anything that is not, um, we can then link to. So it tells you it's a book, it's also laid out really nicely um, in terms of further and recommended reading if they want to change that. So they can change it to articles. They can also um, filter it by their recommended or core reading. There we go. So we're just looking at the core reading here so they can prioritize themselves. But also they can um, tick it, add notes. Um, and also they can um, uh, tick it as read. And sometimes some tutors like to see what the students are reading and will check the reading list to see if students are reading them. Um, whether or not they're actually reading them or just ticking them is another matter, but that's not something that we can control. So we show the students this um, after they've had their uh, library induction, whether that be face-to-face uh, -face or online, we then have a session which is called Getting Started in Finding Resources Within the Library. A very catchy title, we are changing that. Um, and within that, we show them this as their first point of call so that they, um, as Nicola was saying, sorry, as uh, Kim was saying, students will listen to what their tutors are saying rather than library staff. They might listen to us afterwards, but they will go to their uh, tutors as a first point of call. So if we can present them with um, a clear reading list that says, look, your tutors want you to read this, they will, they will go to those uh, immediately. Um, so, yeah, I will hand back over to Nicola, I think, to finish off. Uh, but that's how we actually learn, uh, use it within our teaching, in the teaching and learning team. Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah. I, um, just uh, there's a couple of things I just wanted to to end on. There's literally two slides, so I won't bother putting them up on the screen. Um, I was just interested in uh, in how uh, people on the call um, were dealing with a couple of uh, of things. Um, obviously, uh, we've had the broken link reporter available to us for a little while now, uh, but we're finding at Nottingham that we're not getting a great number of, of broken links being reported. Um, and I'm sure there are number a great number of broken links on our on our reading list in places um, so um, obviously we've put one of our frequently asked questions is is around um, broken links um, but I wondered if anyone had done much to, to promote that, that that service with the students and, and how well that had gone down in your institutions um, and the other thing that I was going to say was um, and, and, and Kim's already touched on this is uh, really getting the academics to um, to sell the reading list to the students as well uh, we did a bit of an exercise a, a, a good few years ago now but probably about four or five years ago uh, when we contacted all of the academics that had the most popular top 10 reading lists to try and find out why they were top 10 um, and uh, quite a few of those top 10 actually told us that um, they sit down with the students at the beginning of the academic year bring the reading list up onto the screen and show them reading intentions and, and so on so that obviously leads through to, to being the most popular popular lists and we'd really like to encourage more academics to do that so when I do the the um, sessions for our academic staff then I, I do mention that to them um, but if anyone's got any brilliant ideas of getting uh, getting academics to actually um, demonstrate the lists to um, to the uh, students as well as the wonderful work that Catherine's team are doing with with the new students as they arrive um, I'd be interested in that uh, too um, but yeah that's the end of what we wanted to say um, but um, yeah if anyone's got any questions then we can uh, I've asked you some, so if anyone's got any questions for us, then that's fine too. Thank you very much for the Thank opportunity. You. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Rachel's just uh, answered that. So great question, by the way, on the report broken link. It would be great to hear how it's being received and used. Uh, Rachel Ramley. Hi, Rachel from Sussex. Our uh, IT guru runs a report on broken links for us. If this can auto run, we may be able to present on it one day. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, so, so it's going the other way. So you run a report on broken links. Are those what's been, I guess that's not from what's been reported, or is it? Is it when they've been reported, Rachel, he takes the data from there? I can unmute you as well if that helps. Give you time to reply. 
yeah okay one sec let me just find you in our attendees okay Rachel you should be unmuted yes that's better hello everyone thank you um I just thought it'd be useful because we've been talking to Tim Hobson about this um, and I'm here speaking as a completely unqualified person because it's our IT guru, Tim Graves, who um, worked this out a couple of years ago. And it's something that we run every term or something like a mass report out of links that don't work. Basically, they either get point to 404s or they, they don't go to, to good URLs. So if we can get that running, every month automatically we can get a broken links report as opposed to having students reporting to us broken links um, which as you say they may not do and it, but it was really interesting to hear what you said about they're not um, reporting broken links to you whereas we thought they would report a lot of links that weren't broken but were ebooks that you know the licenses are all being used up or something like that they're they're running into other digital content access issues and reporting all the time those as broken links whereas in fact they wouldn't be broken links so we thought we might swerve the report broken link function and run our own reporting on it and tim hudson was very excited about that so we're hoping we might be able to present on that later in the year and as i say when i say we i mean not me <laughs> Now that's really interesting, Rachel. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'll certainly uh, pick up that conversation outside in between our two Tims. Um, uh, take that, listen to take that forward. That's really interesting. Thank you. I hope that helped that question, Nicola. I will just see if anyone else has mentioned that about broken links and how they're used. Not for now, um, but that may change. Uh, so I'll just keep checking. Um, yes, the two Tims will speak, Rachel says. Um, yeah, Evelyn says, if you are developing a report that will run and identify broken links, that will be really useful. So I'll find out what um, where that conversation is, uh, Evelyn, and keep you, we will keep you posted um, to find out what is happening there. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to just share a, a different guide again. Uh, so our third university. So the University of Glasgow actually gave their permission uh, to share their resources because I came across these when I actually updated them on their homepage of their reading list tendency and they've actually used Sway which I hadn't seen before so hopefully I am still sharing and as we scroll down they are still giving the the same information in terms of you know what the the interface does and um, what the benefits are and how um, everything is within the reading list. Uh, they mention about being mobile friendly. So if we just scroll down this very slowly, and again, when we share the recording of this article, I'll uh, pop a link to this guide on the support article as well, just so you can see. Uh, so they too have Moodle. Uh, so they're talking about accessing lists from there or directly from the, the reading list homepage, which they've linked. And then uh, just scrolling down, they just talk about the different features such as table of contents, uh, how resources are viewed, how online reviewed resources are, what the different filters are that a student can do, and citations. And then at the very bottom, they've got a link to a YouTube video on uh, just a walkthrough, really basically, of the, the reading list system from a student's perspective and how they can interact with it and look at the features. So that is the first one I've seen using Sway. So I thought it'd be a good one to just share with you to just show a, another different uh, case study, really, an example of how student guides have been used to support them. Uh, and just on that, as a reminder, I know many of your students do access their reading list through your VLE, whether that's Canvas, uh, Blackboard, Moodle, Brightspace. Uh, but you are able to put in uh, links on your university homepage. So if you do have any guides or videos, we can put some links at the top on your branding as well on your homepage. Just let us know through a support kit if that's something that you'd like to do. I also really liked the, um, the feedback and the quote um, that you shared there, Kim, and I thought it was really interesting to hear how uh, students have also 
uh, receive this and that you actually use that in your academic sessions. So, um, great, we've just had some discussion. So I'll just pause there. That was everything that we um, wanted to share with you today. And I'll just pause to see if anyone's got any questions or perhaps any comments on what they've seen. Uh, has this in, inspired you in, in terms of creating resources for students and, and going that angle or perhaps anything that you wanted to share yourselves on what you've done? I'll just pause a little bit there. Okay, well, thank you all for your interaction and questions and attending today. As always, we do have different webinars uh, coming up. So I'll just share with you what we have coming up. So later this month, we have our Talis Aspire product update webinar. And then in October, we are planning a Talis Aspire and accessibility focused webinar as well. So we really want to make sure that you're getting what you, you want from these community webinars. Um, as you've seen today, it's, it's all about supporting each other with the community. So if there is anything that you would like to talk about, it doesn't have to be a long presentation. Um, you can tag team with other universities or um, just a short presentation to start discussion. We would really love to, to hear from you and we'll support you with any practices and things because it's a great way of, of interacting with the community. As always, our webinars are on our Talis events page and that was everything that I had. Oh, we've got some questions here. Sorry, Rachel's just said that there's some really nice guides there. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. I'm glad they helped. Uh, Evelyn, if you choose, oh, sorry, if you allow students to see reading lists of other modules, I assume they aren't able to see scanned chapters. So um, as long as a, a student is registered at the university and then signed into to reading this and also into your university system through your single sign on, they have access to view the content. There is a warning that comes up with Talis Aspire digitised content with some wording to say that if you do download or print this, and it's the wording that we've agreed with the CLA, if you did want to go down the route of restricting uh, students from different modules to view digitisations, that is an option. But I will say there isn't, uh, I think there's one university in our, um, that does that. Uh, but, um, all of our others actually are just happy that uh, they're accessing it. And because that's something that the CLA are happy with, we um, we keep it as that. But that is an option and everything we can catch up on that on our next call as well. I hope that helps. And yeah, Marcel said thank you for your presentation. And so that's great, everyone. So um, yeah, I'll speak to you all on your next support call, support ticket, or on the next webinar. And I'd just like to say thank you to our uh, colleagues today. Thank you to Kim from the University of Reading, and thank you to Caroline and Nicola from the University of Nottingham for your time today as well. And of course, uh, University of Glasgow for allowing me to share their resources. And I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care and um, yeah, keep cool. <laughs> but we've waited a little bit for this sunshine. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.